Join us for this virtually possible event as we transform Niagara to the New Orleans of the North. Get your mask, beads, baubles, and feathers on. Enjoy Cajun and Creole food, classic cocktails, and dance the night away. Celebrate with us on your porch, in your garden, in your living room, or in your driveway. And wait for the band to parade by. Niagara's Summer Mardi Gras, July 18, 2020. It's coming. Just watch and see. The TD Niagara Jazz Festival presents Niagara's Summer Mardi Gras Sessions. Join us online every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. as we bring New Orleans to the North. Direct from the Crescent City, Dance in Man 504, Windex Pete, Christopher Butcher of the Heavyweights Brass Band, and more. Featuring mask making, Cajun cooking demos, musical spoons, second line dance steps, cocktail demos, funky fashion tips, and musical clips. Tune in for these free sessions on our Facebook or YouTube channels, Jazz Niagara. Then we'll celebrate Niagara Summer Mardi Gras together this summer on July 18th. It's virtually possible. Just watch and see. Niagara Summer Mardi Gras sessions are brought to you in part by TD, the City of St. Catharines, and the Town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. And good evening. Welcome. My name is Juliet Dunn, and I am thrilled to be here once again this evening. It's a beautiful evening here in St. Catharines in the Niagara region in Ontario, and I hope it is where you are joining us from. Thank you so much uh, for supporting us this week and the anti-racism rallies from where you are. It's been quite the week, as we all know, and it's really great to see everybody out to support because it's much needed and much appreciated. As you know, we moved our show, our Niagara Summer Mardi Gras session, which was supposed to be on Tuesday. We, in respect for Blackout Tuesday, we moved it to Wednesday. And we brought in Dr. Bryce Miller. And it's the chain of events. Christopher Butcher from the Heavyweights Brass Band introduced us to Dr. Bryce Miller. And what a great session we had with him. And if you've missed any of these sessions, please remember that they are on our Facebook and YouTube channels. And I'll post uh, the links for those later on. So you can always catch them afterwards. So we had a great uh, session with Dr. Bryce Miller and then Dr. Bryce Miller connected us to this artist that you're going to be listening to this evening because he is also in New Orleans. So I love these chain of events and how it all worked out for us this week. Wow. So I'm going to bring on our artist. His name is Tom McDermott. He is a pianist and composer from St. Louis, Missouri, but he's been living down in Crescent City in the wonderful Crescent City, the city of New Orleans since 1984. So New Orleans is noted for traditional jazz and New Orleans R&B and much, much more. And uh, Mr. McDermott is very well known for playing these styles of music. He co-founded and wrote arrangements for the innovative brass band, the New Orleans Nightcrawlers. He has released 17 CDs as a leader and has received praise from the New York Times, Rolling Stone Magazine, the Los Angeles Times, and many other prestigious um, publication, publications. Excuse me. And since 2001, he has devoted much of his time traveling to Brazil, where he has studied and recorded choro music. So I do hope he's going to tell us more about that. Mr. McDermott is also a journalist, and he writes primarily about music and travel. So let's bring on our special guest for this evening. Here he is. Hello, Tom. How are you this evening? Very well. How are you up there? Good. It's it's nice and bomb, hot and balmy, just like New Orleans. No, well, that that sounds that sounds good for uh, your area in June. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us, how long have you been been playing music? Well, uh, I started when I was seven. Studied with my aunt. Took uh, seven years of lessons. Went to high school. Discovered Scott Joplin, and. Uh, that led to everything else, traditional jazz. And eventually, I, around the early 80s, I started hearing the New Orleans guys like Dr. John and especially James Booker, and Professor Longhair. And uh, I just went, went crazy and decided I had to move to New Orleans, which I did in 84. And there I heard Brazilian music and, you know, a lot of I've been, you know, a music traveler. I've been to Cuba, been to Brazil a lot. So uh, 
I'm, I'm just interested in a lot of traditional music. Excellent. So you're going to play us uh, some Brazilian music as well as New Orleans I'll, style music? Sure, I'll play a Brazilian piece, sure. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm going to get out of your way. As I mentioned to you earlier, I'll post comments, but I don't want them to cover up your, your, your lovely hands. So I'll, I'll, if, if you post comments, everybody, if they're longer ones, I might do them at the end of the song. So don't be offended if you don't see your comments come up right away. But we want to see the, the lovely stylings of Tom McDermott. So I'm going to get out of your way. Have a great show. And we'll see you either in between the show or at the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, this is a thank you for having me again. And I'm going to start with a uh, Professor Longhair piece called Tipitina. Here we go. <laughs> I can barely read the comments. I'm, I'm, the, I'm not. I, you would, my nostrils would be this big if I bent over to read them. But um, yeah, Julia, if you have anything uh, really important to say, interject. Uh, that'd be fine. I'm going to continue uh, with a Dr. John Waltz, a gospel waltz. It was on an album called Dr. John Plays Mac Rebenack, which was. Uh, his first solo piano album and really uh, kind of turned his career around for a little bit 
it um, turned him into a solo pianist on tour for a while. And this is a piece written for his mother called Dorothy. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to jump in because I know I you can't, love I, can't I know you, you can't yeah. read that. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that Bonnie, who is our artist liaison, but uh, before that, an avid a jazz fan says, Dorothy, how nice on the one year anniversary of losing the great Malcolm John Rebenack Jr. I've been thinking of him all day. Thank you, Tom. Lovely yes, comment. Thanks, welcome. Bonnie. <laughs> very welcome. Okay. Uh, I'd like to go back to um, Joe Earl Morton, who I heard as a kid, uh, as I mentioned, ragtime, then traditional jazz, and the other stuff. And uh, Jelly Roll is the guy, who, one of the guys who turned ragtime into jazz, called himself the inventor of jazz, which is a little crazy, but you know, he can probably 
back it up more than anybody if any one person did which they didn't but you know so uh you know he took these rag tunes and turned them into you know loosened them up improvised on them but then he also wrote pieces which uh have a afro afro caribbean rhythms which really is what separates new orleans from other places that might have invented jazz uh cities with you know black populations and um, you know, blues influences and whatever, um, you know, minstrelsy, uh, brass band music. But New Orleans had also this connection to Havana, Cuba. It goes way back. And um, I've since, what I thought, what I thought originally was a New Orleans invention. A lot of it really comes from from the Caribbean, and especially from Havana. You know, rhythms like the Tresillo or the uh, the Cinquillo uh, or the Habanera. That's uh, that's Cuban stuff, you know, but way before it was New Orleans stuff. Anyway, um, here's a Jellero Morton piece, the best of his, well, he called them Spanish tinge pieces because he was a Creole and he wanted to be, he wanted to have uh, the European side of his heritage accented. But now he would probably really say Afro-Cuban uh, rhythm. And this is the best of these uh, pieces with these rhythms. And this is called The Crave, Jellero Morton. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay. Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll Martin. And um, gosh, maybe I should play some Gottschalk too, because he's, he's so little known and very important. Uh, this is a guy who was born in New Orleans in 1829, and he was um, writing, he wasn't the first guy to write syncopated, thoroughly, throughout syncopated, through composed syncopated music. Uh, that might go to a fellow named Manuel Somel, a Cuban, but I think Gottschalk is the first, first guy to write a body of work that we would still listen to today. And he's uh, has not gotten the credit he should, but uh, he had an amazing life, went all over you know, Europe and the West Indies, spent a lot of time in Cuba. It's important in Cuba's music history, too. Gottschalk, G-O-T-T-S-C-H-A-L-K. And um, yeah, let me play one um, called uh, Creole Eyes. Ojos Criollos, and I'm going to improvise on it a bit, but um, I think you'll get the gist. And this has um, the, the habanero rhythm. <laughs> Creole Eyes by Louis Moreau Gottschalk, written about 1857, so that's 40 years before rag time. And speaking of rag, I think I should segue now to uh, Scott Joplin, who is a big hero of mine. Um, wrote such wonderful melodies and was such a rhythmic pioneer. 
in his day. It's hard for us to hear that now. And, uh, but anyway, the big hit of his day was the Maple Leaf Rag from 1899. And um, I learned it when I was 14. It was the first rag I learned. And I'm 62 now. I think I've been improvising on it for about almost 40 years. So I really take it apart and uh, play it nothing like um, the written music. But there's plenty of people who can do that if you want to hear that. So here's my arrangement of the Maple Leaf Rag. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All right. So yeah, some Joplin I like to hear played perfectly straight, but then others, you know, I treat as jazz pieces. And this is a something that's been done, at least the Maple Leaf, by a lot of people. I had an album as a kid called They All Played the Maple Leaf Rag. And it was Jill Earl Morton, Sidney Bechet, you know, Earl Hines, all sorts of different early jazz people because the Maple Leaf is a very popular piece and it's fun to improvise on. So uh, Juliet talked about Brazilian music. And um, yes, there's this music um, that starts in the 1870s, 20 years before North American ragtime. And it's called Choro, C-H-O-R-O. It means literally a tear to a shor is to cry. And that's like how you, what you're supposed to achieve on your wind instrument, you know, make it, you know, the Brazilians love that, that, that whole, uh, you know, melancholic emotion in the music, saudade and chorando and all this wonderful culture. I, um, so anyway, I went, I first heard this music in 84 when I moved to New Orleans in the form of a pianist named Ernesto Nazare, who I now can see is sort of like a ur choristo, or chorino, um, or right in the early edge of choro. But you go down there today and you hear his music played as choros. He called them, he wrote what he called tangos brasileiros. But um, yeah, you know, there's quite a few that have been slipped into the show repertory. He wrote about 220 pieces of piano music. And I was very struck by how close to ragtime this stuff was. Same form, same harmonies, just slightly different rhythms. So instead of, it was more like, syncopated the left hand so the syncopation is built in just like with Cuban music where the syncopation is already there as opposed to ragtime where the left hand is very one two three four and the syncopation comes from what the right hand is doing against it so you know playing on the ands on the one and two and three and four and syncopation so anyway, here's a piece by Nazare. This is from 1910, so this is the heart of the ragtime era, but he wrote pieces in the year 1870s as well. This is called uh, Escorregando, means sliding. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, Ernesto Nazare, spelled like Nazareth, but pronounced Nazare. Really wonderful composer. Uh, if you like uh, early jazz and Jop or Jop, when I recommend you check him out. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd like him. Uh, boy. So, I think I would like to play a, um, a piece I recorded with some Brazilian musicians. I did an album called Choro do Norte, Choro from the North, and uh, took North American tunes like Gottschalk and Jelly Roll and Joplin and my own tunes and recorded them with Brazilian musicians. And it was a uh, great fun, probably the highlight of my re recording career so far. We can only hope. Um, this is a piece called Atropado, which uh, I, I play both with the, the tango rhythm, the tango habanero rhythm, and later on with the shoro rhythm. Something to kind of chill out here. Atropado means trapped.
So um, getting back to Pier New Orleans, I mentioned, or maybe I didn't mention, my favorite guy is James Booker, who um, I'm looking at right across the room here. I have a great picture of him there next to Chopin and Scott Joplin. And uh, Booker is much better known than he now than he was when he died in 83. Still not known as the genius that, that he was. But, uh, you know, Harry Connick Jr. was his prime pupil, and Harry gives kudos all the time, as did Dr. John when he was around. He taught both of them, taught Dr. John how to play organ. And uh, Booker's hard to describe because he really, uh, he just invented a new way of playing the piano and had all these ingenious different ways to use the left hand. And one particular way I like is eight to the bar left hand with a moving bass line at the same time. So um, I'm going to play one of his few originals that has this device. This is called Pop's Dilemma by James Carroll Booker III. <laughs> Thank you. 
right. Anything to chime in, Juliet? Yeah, some friends, uh, Rob and Arlene, were just saying it's been too long since they were there. And I said, yep, we're missing NOLA big time. We all wish we were there with you, you know? Well, in a way you are. Yeah, you know, thank you so much, in fact, for inviting us into your home because it's it's really kind of cool, uh, this live streaming and, and being in people's homes and, you know, and yeah. And I assure you, I do not have red curtains all over my house. This is just... Just for the show. Yeah. No, no. It's just this one wall ha happens to have. It actually hides a lot of junk behind there. So. It's perfect. I know all about curtains. Believe me. <laughs> no, it's great. And we've also had some um, wonderful comments. We're just loving the exp explanations you're giving and all of the history. Yeah. And yeah. I've been trying to pull up some of the names and post them for people. Thank you for spelling them out. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Welcome. Thank you. It's, we're learning a lot and really enjoying it. And I know uh, everyone's going to go away and do some more research on their own. So that's pretty cool. That's what it's all about. That'd be good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have next? We have well, probably time for about two more tunes if, you, if you're good. 6.48. Uh, you want me to play right up to seven? Or uh, I, can, I can squeeze in three. Let me, let me do three. We'd love three. Excellent. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to play... Uh, a tune that was uh, written originally by Cannibal Adderley. And I found out yesterday when I played it that he was actually inspired by Ray Charles's, uh, you know, soul jazz pieces. And this makes sense because it's a very uh, gospel sounding piece. And I wish I had the lyrics in front of me because they are so apropos for this moment. It's called Sermonette. And it was written by, the lyrics were written by John Hendricks, who is the master of vocalese, who became famous of Lambert Hendricks and Ross, who I loved as a kid. Uh, and um, anyway, I'm just going to play a little of this, just a little, maybe two choruses piece. And I encourage you to listen to the uh, Lambert Hendricks and Ross version. It's, it's just very beautiful. So I think we got time for two more tunes. I'm going to play uh, a shuffle of mine that I wrote 30 years ago. 
And uh, although I will admit I really didn't know how to play shuffle until I heard James Booker with the right feel. And um, this is called the Copacetic Boogie. <laughs> Set a boogie, one of my creations from from the LP era. That's how how far back that goes. So, and not from the retro LP era, the the real LP era, the uh, analog era. So I'm going to play one more. This being a New Orleans centric uh, production, I'm going to end with Big Chief, written by Earl King and uh, made famous by Professor Longhair's versions. And um, here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Tom. That was incredible. We've had so many great comments. The, the most recent one, thank you so much for this. Totally enjoyed this dreaming of New Orleans. And we all oh. are. Thank you, Julia. And uh, thanks to Bryce yes. for uh, setting this up. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to sign off with everybody and I'm going to come back and say bye to you. We really hope we can get you up okay. here one day soon when Everyone. those borders open. Yeah. So take it easy, take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you in just a sec. Okay. <laughs> so everyone, once again, that was Tom McDermott live from New Orleans. And a big thanks to Christopher Butcher to connecting us to Dr. Bryce Miller, who connected us to Tom. And uh, what a great show. Um, coming up on Tuesday, so we continue with our Mardi Gras sessions. So the story is, if you don't know the story already, we're doing a show on Saturday, July 18th. It's our second annual Niagara Summer Mardi Gras. Hopefully we can have some people gather. And if we can't, that's okay, because we're all going to celebrate from home. These sessions are going to help you to learn how to do some funky dance steps, how to have find some funky clothes, how to make a mask from things you have at home. And on Tuesday, how to cook and how to um, make uh, New Orleans cocktails. And on Tuesday, you're going to learn how to make music right from home with the Vaudevillian. It's a jug band and musical spoons workshop. So grab some spoons from the drawer. They're also going to tell you to grab anything around from the house. And we're all going to jam together. It's going to be very exciting. So please spread the word. That's coming up this Tuesday. Our sessions are from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Central Time. Eastern Standard Time, excuse me, and our live stream jazz, live stream love jazz series are always 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Next weekend, we have Thompson Egbo Egbo coming your way from um, Toronto, and we have Gillian Lebec coming your way from Vancouver. The one advantage of being in lockdown and doing live streaming is we can bring in people from all over the world. Oh, and also, speaking of all over the world, also on Sunday, we're going to introduce a 2 p.m. show. Here's why, because of the time difference. We've got some wonderful musicians that we're connected to in Europe and overseas. But of course, when we're on from 7 until 8, it's very late in Europe. So we're starting on June 14th and June 28th. We have uh, two different art artists coming in from 2 p.m. until 3 p.m. And then once we've done Mardi Gras, well, we'll be doing Fridays and Sundays. So Fridays at 7, Sundays at 2. Lots going on, but it's exciting and it keeps us all busy, entertained, and keeps us all sane hopefully during these challenging times. So on Sunday, we have Floris Windy, who's from Meru Tiri. If you saw him in the festival a couple of years ago, Meru Tiri is an eight-piece band, but Floris is bringing in a trio and he's going to be on flugelhorn. So much going on. So next week we have four shows. Who knew? Very busy in lockdown. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to leave you with a couple of promo videos to get you excited for all of the stuff that's coming up. So give me a second here while I pull it up. Have a great evening, everyone. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you Tuesday. Take care. Bye. The TD Niagara Jazz Festival presents Niagara Summer Mardi Gras Sessions. Join us online every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. as we bring New Orleans to the North. Direct from the Crescent City, Dance and Man 504, Windex Pete, Christopher Butcher of the Heavyweights Brass Band, and more. Featuring mask making, Cajun cooking demos, musical spoons, second line dance steps, cocktail demos, funky fashion tips, and musical clips. Tune in for these free sessions on our Facebook or YouTube channels, Jazz Niagara. Then we'll celebrate Niagara Summer Mardi Gras together this summer on July 18th. It's virtually possible. Just watch and see. Niagara Summer Mardi Gras sessions are brought to you in part by TD, the City of St. Catharines, and the Town of Niagara-on-the-Lake.